it's time to learn about local extrema. In the last video, we ended with this question. What's special about x values for which f prime of x equals 0? Let's look again at our familiar graph. The derivative of this function is 0 at the same x value at which f reaches its maximum value. Of course, that's no coincidence. Let's look now at this graph. There are three places where the derivative of the function is 0. In other words, three places where it has horizontal tangent lines. This one is called a local maximum, and this one is called a local minimum. These are what we'll talk about in this video. This one is called an inflection point. We'll talk about those in a later video. So let's consider this graph that has only two horizontal tangent lines. This is what we just called a local maximum. So we have two words to explain, maximum and local. We're talking about a peak, so it's intuitively a maximum. But what does that mean in detail? If we put a point at the peak and move it along the graph just a bit in either direction, the point goes down. That's what we mean by maximum. We'll see the formal definition in a moment, but this is the basic idea. Now to explain local, we don't care how f behaves everywhere. For example, we don't care that f has larger values over here than at the peak we're talking about. We only care how f behaves on a small interval around the x value in question. Finally, here's the definition of a local maximum of a function f. It's the value of f at a point x equals a, for which there's an open interval i containing a, such that f of x is less than or equal to f of a for all x in i. Now that we've got this, let's look at a graph in greater detail. Here's a function, and here's an interval i. We look at f's values at all of the points in i. That gives us this interval on the y-axis. This interval is called f of i. Note the square brackets, which is just notation for the set of all values that f takes on i. We can see that f of a is the local max, since it's the largest value in the interval on the y-axis. There's an important thing to note here, though, and that's the less than or equal to in the definition. That means that a local maximum can occur at multiple points in i. For example, if we stretch f out a bit around a, we don't change the interval on the y-axis, and f of a is still a local maximum, but f also has local maxima at values on either side of a. There's also the corresponding definition of a local minimum, where we require that f of x be greater than or equal to f of a for all x in i. Let's look at an example. Consider x cubed minus 3x squared minus 9x plus 4. This is a cubic polynomial, so we think that we know what it looks like. But this is how we can justify part of our intuition. To look for local extrema, we look for horizontal tangent lines. The derivative is this, and we can factor to get 3 times x minus 3 times x plus 1, which has roots at negative 1 and 3. So these are our candidates for local extrema. You might think that we're done, but there's something else that we need to know. We think that the graph of f looks something like this, which has exactly two horizontal tangent lines, each of which corresponds to a local maximum or minimum. But remember this graph, where there's a horizontal tangent line at a place that's not a local extremum. To see why, let's look in greater detail at the derivative. If we look at the intervals on which f prime isn't zero, we can label each as being an interval on which it's either positive or negative. The local maximum occurs where f prime changes from positive to negative, and the local minimum occurs where f prime changes from negative to positive. At the middle point, where there's a horizontal tangent line but no local extremum, the derivative doesn't change sign. This is how we know that we have a local extremum. Going back to the example, we see that f prime changes sign at both negative 1 and 3 so f has local extrema at both of these points. To determine which is which, we look at the specific sign changes. Since f prime changes from positive to negative at negative 1, f has a local maximum at x equals negative 1. And likewise, since f prime changes from negative to positive at 3, f has a local minimum 
at x equals 3. This leads us to a theorem. Suppose that f is a differentiable function. If f prime changes from positive to negative at x equals a, then f has a local maximum at x equals a. And if f prime changes from negative to positive at x equals a, then f has a local minimum at x equals a. In fact, we don't need to assume that f is differentiable at a, as long as it's continuous there. We'll end with a question. Why do we need continuity?